Hi, my name is Tracy and I'm a mortician. And I'm Tricia and I'm not. And welcome back to another episode of... Are you dying to know? Because Tricia's dying to know. I am dying to know. So yes. our question today is from John. Hi, John. <laughs> John's got more of a name, but yep. I struggle. Yep. John, with, a, with no H. J-O-N, John. Yeah. Hi, John. Hello. Have you ever had a seemingly normal case and then started to prep the body and worked out that there was something untoward there, something didn't look right, and maybe it was a murder, and you had to call forensics back in. Ooh. Did you ever have that happen, Tracy? Okay. John wants to know. Okay, John, yeah. it's <laughs> a good question. Um, it, in a roundabout way, yes and no, no. I had one not too long ago, actually. Was expected to die, palliative, but the family then said to the um, transfer team that, um, oh, mum had a fall just last night and she died this morning. And it's like, oh, and then I look and there's a little injury on the face or something, a little mark, and I was like, oh, okay. And I said to... Um, the transfer team, so we've got the life X or death certificate when the doctor signed the life X, so I'm, okay. But we have to report that because it's a bit of a, um, you know, questionable. Fall the day before the person died. Yeah, they were expected to die because they were palliative, but um, still, we, we question it. So um, I go to my boss and uh, it's up to him to then contact the coroners and go from there and see what they need to say so what happens is the processing will say uh, we had this person brought into care passed away this morning uh, the family said this person had a fall just recently um, and there's a mark on the uh, body like on the cheek or wherever the mark is um, so we'll give all that information to the coroner and then it's up to the coroner whether or not the coroner decides to take that further and taking that further means, do we phone the police? Because that's what happens is we have to phone the police to come and collect the deceased from us. It just means it's, um, it's all very, uh, you know, you've got to do this because it's the police that need to uh, come in to the play when it's deemed as might be suspicious. You know, it, it pro pro probably not, but we have to have the police police phone in. And when the police are brought in, they'll come to uh, our funeral home. Uh, we have to get the deceased out ready for the police to arrive. And at the same time the police arrive, the, the contract, the funeral home, whoever has that contract with the police, because the police don't transfer the bodies, it's just another funeral home, have a contract with the police, uh, just like us, with their transfer team. And they'll come to transfer the body to um the pathologist place to where there possibly may be an autopsy happened with the pathologist. So what happens then is the police will turn up with the other uh, transfer team from a different funeral home and they just have to go through um, some questions with uh, us who transferred the body, uh, what times, dates, blah, blah, and all of that. And they'll there come in and take photos of the deceased and they also are there while the, the funeral company that uh, transfers the body has to uh, put ID onto them. And it's ID the police fill out, but they put them on. So it's all witnessed. It's a mortuary tag for the um, coroner's area for if there's a possible uh, autopsy to happen. And then the body's uh, put into a body bag, sealed with a uh, clip, sealed tight, so it can't be opened. And then that transfer team will then transfer the body to the uh, coroner area, which is a different building, and it's a, it's a government building. So, And then from there, it's up to the coroner to decide what to do. Right. So what will happen is, so the coroner is the, the judge, the magistrate, the whatever. The coroner isn't the medical person. This person is the person that will tell the medical people if they want an autopsy performed. So the coroner will go through the medical records, they'll go through a history of what, what you know, it can take a day, it can take two days, depends how busy they are. And they'll go through that and they'll go, oh, mm, we're not happy with this. Can we have an autopsy performed by the pathologist? And then we'll have a look after, you know, the report from the pathologist is done. Or they might just look through the medical records and went yeah we're, we're happy no autopsy you know and off you go and so then does that person come back to you come straight back 
Right. Yes. Okay. So then we arrange for us to go back and pick that person up. Yeah. Or sometimes they'll not call the police. The coroners will go, oh, we're just going to do a medical check. Uh, we're just going to leave the body. It's just don't touch. So we'll get the uh, call from the coroner and say, please do not touch the body. Leave in the cold room. Don't touch. So that's what we will do. We've done many times. Don't touch the body till the coroner's done their preliminary work and said, yeah, we're happy. You can now, uh, We I will give you the permission to go ahead and prep the body in that. So, yeah, if we get people in with unusual marks that, you know, have come from somewhere like a, you know, a residence or a nursing home or or something like that that are expected to die but have marks on them that may not um, match up to the, you know, they've got cancer and why we've got a big gash on the cheek or anything like that. But I haven't really got into a prep of somebody and found wounds and all of that kind of thing. You, I've had people die from accidents and they're going to have wounds all over them because they've been in a traffic accident or they've been in a work accident. So, And they've usually already been to the coroners. So a lot of people that have extensive injuries to the body tend to not come to us first anyway. They will all always go into the uh, coronial uh first because it's an accident or an incident it's an incident mm. it's not a natural cause of death so anything that's not natural cause of death automatically will go into the coronial area first and we wouldn't see that body at all until all that work's done and they're happy to sign off saying yeah well this person was murdered we'll investigate uh, autopsy's done now the body's ready to be released to the funeral home and the family or if it's an road traffic accident and they're happy that no other foul play was happening they'll be release the body to the funeral home so yeah so i have uh, we have reported uh, incidents where there's uh, what we deem is could be you know there's an accident and we don't report it because we'll go oh there's a bump on the head here we just say oh is it possible that this could have contributed to the death of this person not the actual cancer that they had or something like that so particularly if the form nine or you know the sign off doesn't indicate anything about that that's right yes that's right that's another thing that you've got to look at and it's got a heart attack yet this big gash in the head or something like that and you go oh that's a bit weird well and I guess you just have red flags like that yeah yeah so anything like that but I haven't got really into a a full prep the usually noticeable straight away if there's a bump or here there and yeah we do report things to the coroner if we think uh, it 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 needs to be reported to the coroner and more often than not it is just a sign off from the uh, coronial area to see yeah it's all good it was an accident um and the person was actually gonna die that so yeah but a great question though. yeah it was a I good like question it. wasn't yeah, it i like it that one thank yeah. you for asking that thanks john yeah thank you you have a good evening won't you yes and you have a good evening or morning and mm-hmm. we'll see you next time take care guys thanks see ya. bye, bye.